route to Jonesboro through the rugged state of Arkansas reminds us that timing is everything. To experience the extraordinary, it takes more than preparation. You simply have to be in the right place at the right time. Any week or any player, everything can change. All the dedication, training, and support build to manifest a memory that can never be taken away from you. And as the visitors for this year's eclipse leave Jonesboro and the city returns to normal, remember, the groundwork for the next unforgettable moment is already on the way. The 2024 Jonesboro Open starts now. week in Arkansas. Totality was wonderful and so many people from around the world flocking to the great state of Arkansas to see such a spectacular sight. But now another spectacular sight is about to unfold here at the 2024 Jonesboro Open. It's Tournament Central time. Round number one for the FPO division is underway, and myself and Nate Perkins are here to bring you into the action once again. Nate, we come back to Jonesboro every year, mm -hmm. and you and I have spoken. Every year, this place seems to grow on us. Mm -hmm. Bring us into this place. Where are we? Man, it's a, it's a charming little city. It's it's a small town, little college town. Arkansas State University sits here. We're at the northeast corner of the state. We're about an hour northwest of the city of Memphis, and then pretty much four hours due south of St. Louis. The town sits up on the little baby Crowley Ridge aptly named for the Crowley Ridge agates that are found here. A lot of the disc golfers like to go off and, and look into the red dirt fields for those agates. We heard Cat Merch talking about those, but we're looking at the little main street right here and just 75,000 people. And in most states that wouldn't even make you know the top 25, but this in the little state of Arkansas makes Jonesboro the fifth largest city in the state and it is it has grown on us and the this side of heaven at this point is one of those courses that we look forward to every year both as players and as fans because the holes have just grown on us they've become iconic and over the years brian the course hasn't changed that much until this year this is the year where the most significant changes both on the course but more importantly, the flow this year, Brian. And I want to talk in depth with you about the flow. Brian, walk us through what has changed outside. So we talked to the tournament director, Brad Peets, and he said that even before the end of last year's tournament here at Jonesboro, this flow change was already on the docket. So they brought hole one and tournament central up to what's called party hill, which is the best vantage point on the entire property. You're at the highest point on the course. And now you can look down and see multiple holes of disc golf. So now instead of starting in hole one, or at least the old hole one, which is now hole number 11, we are now starting on the iconic hole number 14 of the old course, uh, which is this beautiful downhill valley shot, par four for the women, an eagleable par four for the women, and a really entertaining par three for the NPO field. Uh, so I think personally that change in itself uh, makes it a much more exciting track. The flow actually makes a little bit more sense than it did in the past. Um, and I'm really excited to see how things change, but Nate, psychologically a mm -hmm. few of the changes might might uh, take an effect on the players as well yeah i think that in an ideal world brian the flow of a golf course really shouldn't affect the mind of the player right but we know that it does we heard calvin heimberg and cat merch we heard them talking about the flow and for me hole 14 that downhill shot which is now hole one it used to be you know late in the round 
and people were had some data about how they were playing and whether or not they were going to feel comfortable attacking or not now it's at the very beginning of the round i think a lot of players are just going to be sending it and and getting out there and then on the contrary we've got the old hole 18 which is now playing as hole 10 and that is one of the hardest holes on the entire disc golf pro tour used to players kind of went for that hole i think you know calvin said it in his interview now it's in the middle of the course and it just kind of changes the mentality of whether or not to go for it i think a lot of players might kind of ease back on that one and then they mm -hmm. follow it up with the difficult 11 old hole one and the difficult 12 so I, i'm going to be paying really close attention to how it kind of affects whether or not you know people are getting aggressive early in the round or whether they're getting aggressive on 18 like they did in the past when it was a finishing hole uh, i also brian i love the switch because of where this course is finishing old hole five that downhill 450 foot hole is now the new 18 we're looking at the green now it just makes so much sense if you're sitting up on top of party hill you can see like five or six holes and now you're going to be able to see the finish here at the disc side of heaven from that party hill so i i'm with you brian i love the change i think it flows much better than it has in years past and the new hole 18 is just a, a dream finishing hole yeah, and I think we'll be talking a lot more about this flow after we've seen the players kind of go through it for the first time. But there's some more changes to the actual course that we need to talk about. Uh, hole number two, which was originally hole number 15, mm -hmm. that's a brand new hole now that used to be one of the easier holes on tour. Kind of a chip hyzer around the corner to uh, a decently sloped green. Mm -hmm. But now at 360 feet, it goes dead straight. And the basket mm -hmm. is perched up behind this big mature tree on the right. And you don't have much room room to flex the backhand because that tree on the on the right and then also the tree line on the left side just gives you no space so uh, I was watching a lot of MPO players really blast some distance drivers trying to slide under, underneath this canopy mm -hmm. I am very interested to see how the FPO field does here they did not give them a short tee pad for this mm -hmm. and frankly that feels like an oversight from my side uh just because mm -hmm. who knows what the wind is going to be doing up there and also again watching some of the powerful mpo players have to get there with the distance driver we'll just have to see uh moving on hole number nine now on this course originally hole number 17 which was just a brutal par four is now turning into a par three to accommodate the new mm -hmm. tournament central area but they've put the tee pad just far enough back on this hill to make this left to right bending shot really tricky. I think it's well balanced for the forehand and the backhand. What do you think? Yeah, so we're sitting at a spot where this is not quite a great drive from the old 17, both MPO and FPO, because you can't quite see the pin. One of those great drives, you could just see this green right here, but it puts it in a spot where the forehand might be the common play for a lot of players, but it's right in between that backhand turnover line. And they've made this left side of the fairway up by that left tree line OB. But of course this green right here slopes severely from left to right. So the forehand will be running away. If you hit at the bottom of the hill, we've we've seen that where you can get that kind of anti skip up to the pin. But if you hit by the pin, the forehand's just gonna run away, Brian. So that's mm -hmm. where I think that the backhand turnover uh, plays just a little bit better to kind of match the the angle of that green and not run down to that tree line yeah i think it's well balanced because the forehand can get the skip and at least get you some sort of opportunity the backhand turnover is probably the better angle on that shot but mm -hmm. you have these gorgeous mature trees with some low-hanging branches that are likely to block a backhand or at least lower the percentages of puring the line so i'm interested to see how players attack that one as well we have one more to talk about. Hole number 14, originally the par 5, 16th for the MPO and the par 4 for the FPO. A lot of FPO players saying the tee shot originally was really janky, so to speak. You're throwing kind of a blind tee shot you see on the left side down to this really specific landing zone. And it's really difficult to have a shot coming in on hyzer and then land it softly on a blind slope. Um, so it just kind of made it a really awkward tee shot, but now they've backed the tee pad up into a par five. What do you think about this change, Nate? 
Yeah, I love this change. I always thought that old 16 was awkward for FPO because like you said, they're throwing blind onto this down slope down to the water. They don't know if they rolled into the water, you know, they, they needed a spotter there. They would go straight to the drop zone. I think it's at a, a good distance to where we might see the top 15% of the field even send this in two. So this tee pad and fairway is headed due north and we have wind out of the west a little bit out of the southwest even today so it the wind is actually going to be helping them get across the pond they need about 375 to get in front of that tree to be looking at the pin to send it across and i th i think that you know the top 15 20 percent of the field can give themselves the green light for the eagle here and i love that this hole is still late in the round brian yeah, it's really tactical because then you throw your tee shot, you have a really tough decision to make. Do I want to get aggressive and throw something ridiculous over the creek? And there's a lot of different ways to do it. I've seen players even go left side of that giant tree that the players used to have to contend with. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can throw a giant flex over the water. There's the hyzer. But then if you want to lay up down to the bottom of that little hill, it's one of the trickiest little shots that we have on the disc golf pro tour so decision making is prime real estate on new hole number 14 with that we have to say uh, or we have to talk about cap merch who is the returning champion who obviously won in a playoff against Haley king in dramatic fashion mm -hmm. she showed up that week with the confidence of macho man randy savage we talked to her this week and she's back in character let's hear what she had to say you had a wonderful victory here in Jonesboro. You took down the field yeah, in a pretty incredible fashion. Oh, yeah, big time. Do you still think about that when you walk on these grounds? Yeah, a little bit, for sure. Um, the, the course has switched around, which I really enjoy the flow of. Um, I got to the hole that I won on, and I was like, man, I wish I could, like, throw it up there for two or something. Whatever, you know. I'm here. I'm ready to play. What's the dream now? To be number one, it's as simple as that. I mean, Kristen's number one, she's pretty good. Um, so I guess just somehow become better than Kristen, if that's possible. I feel pressure from uh, my family because I don't want to disappoint them even though they love me no matter what. I feel pressure from the people because I know they want to watch me do good. And I feel a lot of pressure, the most pressure from myself because I don't want to let anyone down. Uh, I want to be the best that I can be, but sometimes it's just not like that, and that's just part of that process. Remember at the press conference last year, when she was again dressed up in character, she said, I'm going to ride this confidence until the day I die, and then she wins the tournament, and it was just an incredible moment. And then now this year, it's interesting to hear her say, Kristen Attar is pretty good at disc golf. I'm going to have to somehow be better than her. Is that just like a, a way to kind of keep herself humble and lower the expectations? Or mm. what, what do you what do you make of that? Is she still actually as confident as she was last year? I, I'm not buying the, the full confidence there. And I think, you know, she's really given it away when she does put Kristen up on that pedestal and she says hey Kristen's obviously the best player in the world and I want to be as good as Kristen or better if that's possible just that statement alone says a lot about where your mind is at as a player like when we talk to Kristen about her other players like she won't even acknowledge you know, yeah. she doesn't compare herself to other players. It's always just her, her mindset and, and whatever the course brings her. So Kat is in a different state of mind entirely than the number one player in the world right now. She, she isn't confident and she's not throwing the disc as well as she was last year. She, right now she's 16th in circle one in regulation. She's not great off the tee. And even when she does get there, Brian, I don't think she's even in the top 10 right now in C1X putting. And you have to throw the disc extremely well out here at Jonesboro. If you want to have numbers like she did last year on her dream victory, the confidence is going to have to go up and she's just going to frankly have to get a little better at throwing the disc right now. 
Well, the one thing I, I do have to say, I'm looking at some season stats right now for Cat Merch, and she's averaging five birdies per round. That's actually a pretty solid number. The problem is she's averaging 4.24 bogeys or worse per round, so completely canceling out all of the birdies that she's working hard to get. If she can just keep it safe around the greens, there's not a lot of OB out here on this course. I still think she has an opportunity to win this tournament because she's ha- she's riding the feelings and the confidence from last year. Mm-hmm. But yes, the putter is going to have to go in the basket for Cat. Interested to see how she does on this new layout. We have to go to a commercial break, but on the other side, Calvin Heimberg is the man of the hour. He's won three of the last four. He's won both of the last two Jonesboros. We'll talk Calvin after the break. In a backyard kingdom, not so different from your own. A prince of southern royalty was born for plastic stone. There's nothing more that you can do. I'm David Wiggins, and in 2016, I set the disc golf world distance record with a throw of 1,108 feet. Whether I'm out in the field measuring a max distance throw or on the course checking the elevation change for an upshot, I rely on the Eagle Seeker 360 to give me accurate distances. It's the only rangefinder on the market that measures in feet, yards, and meters. It's USB-C rechargeable and features a lithium-ion battery. Visit EagleSeeker360.com to get yours today. And welcome back. Microsoft Teams is presenting the 2024 Preserve Championship and offering a new community platform for disc golf fans. Scan the QR code on your screen to join the Disc Golf Tour Talk Teams community. Members will have until Monday to ask Paul Uliberry a question for a chance to win a Discraft disc and a free year subscription to Disc Golf Network. Uli will be answering questions in that community next week. Calvin Heimberg has won three of the last four Jonesboro Opens, and not easily. He's won in dramatic fashions. He's won in playoffs against Paul McBeth. He's had it come down to hole number 18. Nate, does Calvin, with the injury he's nursing, have what it takes to win this tournament again this year? No doubt Calvin has what it takes. And if we go hole by hole, I think the course out here at Jonesboro is the one least necessary. And the way that this course shapes up where he's not at a disadvantage, at the only hole I think is old old, old hole eight. And, and bear with us as we catch up on, on these new holes out here. But the forehand just really plays on that one. It's really hard to get the backhand around that corner and to settle in and on that elevated basket. But Calvin's throwing the disc extremely well. Uh, he's missed six C1X putts on the season. I believe five of those came during round one of the chess.com. So he's missed one putt in the last month, Brian. And when he's on his game off the tee, we know that the putter's on fire right now inside 40 feet. No doubt that Calvin's a threat out here. I was going to say, he's putting 92% from C1X right now, only behind Paul Ulibarri, who's having an, an iconic start to the season. He's 100 for 106, so tough uh, player to catch in the putting category, but Calvin just looks fantastic right now. And maybe a little bit of adversity is exactly what he needed to kind of snap into focus and maybe... Uh, take down some of these victories he hasn't won since Jonesboro last year but we've seen with injuries especially with the top players it gives them something to focus on rather than the maybe the pressure of the moment maybe the expectations that they've set up for themselves this is you know exactly what Calvin wants uh, we did hear from him at the press conference he gave us just classic Calvin answers showing off the stoicism let's take a listen to what he had to say no forehands being practiced um you know I 
rehab is going well. I just think uh, really I'm, there's more tournaments that I, I care more about later in the season, and there's not really any reason for me to push it right now. So um, no forehands. Uh, it's possible if I come down the stretch and maybe need one that I might try to bust one out. But um, for now, I think it's pretty much strict no forehands, which I think for the most part you're okay without out here. It's, it's going to depend on some wind directions. There's definitely a couple of holes that are going to play way harder. But as a whole, I think like the past couple courses, I can I can still attack a lot of holes with only a backhand. I guess it would be great to to win. I mean, I'm always out there trying to win. I don't I'm not necessarily approaching this event any differently. I think I approach every win with the intent to try to play my best and win. So this event's really no different than the other. I have any other, but I've had success at this one. I think this this course sets up really good for for people that that are throwing the disc well. So if I think I think if I if I can, you know, execute well off the tee, I I think I do have a chance out here. Chasing down Calvin Heimberg this week, who still, in my opinion, is the favorite to win this tournament, is the man who might be the favorite of the entire disc golf community right now is Anthony Barella, who's currently number one in the disc golf pro tour point standings. He's won two tournaments already. And Nate, last uh, event at the Texas State Disc Golf Championships, Anthony Barella looked like the best player on the planet by far. What do you think about him? Yeah, I mean, he's just a stepping into uh manhood i mean when i listen to him talk in that interview like he's just not the same anthony barella whatsoever he's just oozing confidence and when when a player has the confidence and then they have the actual skill set and and the physical you know the physicality that anthony barella has like it's a scary formula like he's he's firing on all cylinders right now and we just we don't at all see the fear around the pin we we just see this rhythm and this routine and he's just not surprised anymore when he's battling for the win like he's he's ready to take it on i think the win at chess.com really had a big effect on the amount of confidence that he brings for us at a place like jones bro when there's this much airspace brian i mean what hole is going to be able to slow him <laughs> down like what what wind do we need i mean the the wind is going to be like 15 miles per hour out of the west it's been consistent all week of practice it's not going to get too too windy out here like we've seen it in years past and honestly i think the windier it gets the better this guy has a chance relative to the field right he said that he actually likes it when it's windy because <laughs> it makes it harder for the rest of the field and a little bit easier for him Nate, he's averaging 10 birdies per round. That is just unbelievable. Is that leading? Numbers. That is absolutely leading. The man behind him that we'll talk about next is Gannon Burr. But uh, I have a lot to say about Anthony. And I, I'm picking some things up from when we talked to him that impress me more and more. So let's actually listen to what he had to say this week at the press conference. I like the feeling of like coming down the stretch and like having a chance to win. It's just that's the feeling we all chase. And yeah, that round was super stressful. It was just like you're puckered every single hole, like every hole, <laughs> every hole is just really scary. And in the moment, it's just hard to like deal with. But like after the tournament's over, it's just so cool to look back on and like see that you were in that moment and you overcame it. And then I got to go home last week and decompress and reset a little bit. So we're back and we're ready to go. I'm sure for a while you just kind of always felt like an underdog do you still kind of feel like that even though you're number one on tour um i don't know it's like people have built these expectations for me and i'm just like if you want if you think i'm gonna win every tournament you're gonna be disappointed like it's it's not an easy thing to do but i don't really know what i feel like right now i'm just like playing right now i'm just cruising I absolutely love his answers when you ask him to label himself. And mm -hmm. sometimes we as interviewers ask those questions on accident because it's kind of a, a trap almost because the players don't want to label themselves at all. But so naturally, Anthony's like, I don't know. You asked him at Texas States, are you the best player in the world? And I know you were just trying to hype him up, but he just looked at you and said, I don't know. 
<laughs> I have no idea. And then we ask him again, you know, do you feel like an underdog? I don't know. I'm just playing is what he said. And that's why I think he's going to continue to have success because he's kind of found that perfect mindset where he can mm -hmm. separate the business side of his jerseys selling out and his discs selling out with him showing up to the disc golf course and doing the thing that he truly loves. Nate, I accidentally, I was on LinkedIn and I, I found Anthony Barella's old LinkedIn profile from when he was in college no. talking about how he wanted to be a businessman and yada, yada, yada. And that was when he was 20 years old. And fast forward to now, uh, he said, business can kind of take a back seat. I'm going to follow the thing that I love. And I think that's what we're seeing right now with AB. So just incredible stuff to hear from him. And he mm -hmm. has just given us a show week in and week out. Another guy who's given us a show, who's chasing him down. The last player we're going to talk about today is Gannon Burr, who seems to be right behind him every step of the way. I mean, he's averaging 9.62 mm -hmm. birdies per round. Uh, he's already won. I mean... This is a guy that I feel like we should be talking more about, but AB is just giving us an iconic start. Yeah, I mean, Gannon Burr and Anthony Barella are really similar in the stats there. You said it, he's the only player that's even close to, to averaging that 10 birdies around, which is unheard of. And he is also leading the field in the bogey average at 1.46, Brian. So shout out to Stat Mando for these stats. He's also throwing it into circle one almost as good as anybody 52 percent of the time he's circle one in regulation brian and he's 90 percent in c1x putting right now so again they just they can't make a course hard enough for these guys right now brian if the wind really is going to stay steady at this you know 15 to 18 miles per hour out of the west i imagine we're going to be looking at another shootout that was similar to to brock park we're looking at like 10 to 14 down per round if you want to stay in contention out here hey i'm all for it and nate with that we got to close out tournament central with another edition of perks picks nate walk us through our picks for the week uh favorite favorite time of the week right here brian cap merch top 10 finish Oof. you know I, I think cap merch will squeak the top 10 this week brian I, I am also going to agree with you. I think she's going to ride the confidence from the win. And uh, as long as she sticks the, the putter on the right side of the green, I think she's going to have some good chances. All right. We're looking at another Arkansas native right here. Kevin Jones has not started his 2024 season out like he would like to. He is still putting really well inside C1X, you know, that 85% mark right there. And like he said, he's feeling good about uh, his backhand. He said that it hasn't really been out here at the disc side of heaven. Kevin does that. I think he will get his first top 20 finish of the season. You know, and I am also going to have to agree with you, Nate. I think I think Kevin's also going to get a, uh, a top 20 finish as well. Coming up next... Isaac and Ezra Robinson, the brothers, are both 1040 rated. Who is going to beat who this week going head to head? Man, they you would think that Isaac is just the the, the clear bet here, but I, I honestly I'm high on Ezra Robinson right now. I'm shocked that we haven't seen him, you know, on our leader chase very much this season. And I'm I'm kind of leaning a little bit more toward Ezra. You know, uh, for some parody, because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you go uh, agreeing with me every step of the way, Nate. I, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna delete my pick here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Isaac Robinson. Although Ezra is the man right now, he's got him in circle one and circle two. Uh, I think Isaac is primed to start that ramp up, just similar to what he had last year. Uh, so that's gonna be my pick, Nate. It's another shootout for us this week. You got me so far, but there's always time. Wrapping things up here at Tournament Central. Brian Earhart, Nate Perkins, we're going to send it down to the ground in the DGN booth. Round number one starts now.
morning and welcome to the Dis Side of Heaven. Rolling hills, variable winds, and sunshine greet us for round one of the 2024 Played Against Sports Jonesboro Open presented by Westside Dis. Defending champion Cat Merch officially making her arrival here at the Dis Side of Heaven. Friday morning to get things started. She's looking at us. She's ready to go. Welcome in everyone. I'm Terry Miller joined alongside four-time world champion Hall of Famer Valerie Jenkins. Val, we just saw Cat Merch's arrival. We know she's here for a good time. She's also trying to get down to business. If she were to defend her title, she'd become the sixth unique winner in the FPO division here in just six events this year. That's incredible. What's she going to need to do? Well, it, she hasn't play, been playing great so far this year, but she's in her home state. You can already see she's getting off the bus. She's positive, and uh, Kat Merch, she's got the energy. So it's about just digging deep and kind of remembering what she did last year if she's going to want to defend her title. It was in dramatic fashion that she took it down last year. But now we're going to take a look at our 2024 winners on tour. Picking off our season in Brooksville, Evelina Solonen with the big win at the chess.com. Christine Tatar defended her title in Waco, becoming our second unique winner of the year. Owen Scoggins doing work over in Austin, <laughs> bringing the hype and taking down the victory. Missy Gannon picking up her first major victory. And Anakin Sten takes down Texas State Championship just a couple of weeks ago. So incredible the parody that we're seeing here in our early 2024 season and the records that are being set. So far we have the most unique consecutive winners at DGPT or majors to start a season. We just saw all six of those, or excuse me, all five of those. Most consecutive thousand rated winners. Every winner this season has averaged a thousand or better. And that includes Own Scoggins who averaged 1029 in the open at Austin for her to take that down. Cat getting herself ready. She talked about how she needs to get her putting going. She's your defending J Jonesboro Open champion out of Rosebud, Arkansas, as you mentioned, Val. And with the repeat win, she would be the sixth straight unique DGPT winner this season. And if you've had a slow start to the season, Seems like a good time to get things going would be right now, somewhere you're comfortable with, somewhere you've won before, and in her home state. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Looking back at last year, what it took for her to take this down. really solid play throughout. She had some great driving, she had some great putting, just putting all the pieces together for the entire weekend. Yeah, exactly. I would I would say just very consistent. She was able to stand up to the pressure when the pressure was put on her and then it came down to the sudden death playoff with Haley King and she stood up to the pressure yet again and made it happen. And that's really what it takes. I mean, knowing that our winners this year have had to average over a thousand rated rounds. I mean, you have to be on it. You have to be ready to play from the start. We take a look at the early scores and the leaderboard. Here's your top 15 competitors right now. Holland Hanley out in front, currently with a hot score of three under through seven holes. Tiger Bohr sitting at two under through seven. And our second feature card of the day is ready to go on the tee of one. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're live on the scene now with the 9.35 AM tea time in the FBO division. First on the tee, please welcome from Cincinnati, Ohio, Rebecca Cox. See, this is a different hole one than we've seen in previous years. A lot of rearranged or renumbered holes on the course this year. area in the middle of this fairway so Owen Next just choosing to lay up. From Charlotte, North Carolina, please welcome Haley King. shot of hole number one showing you where that OB is in the middle and as you just said Val plenty of players will opt to lay up and then pitch over hoping to collect a birdie on the first hole as we open with a par four and you mentioned it Val we have some uh, redesign uh, considerations out here along with these notes that the course now starts on what used to be a hole 14 Hole 2, which is the old 15, has been straightened and lengthened. It now comes in at 360 feet, slightly uphill. Hole 9 is the second shot of old hole 17. And the course now finishes on old hole number 5. So not the 18th that we've seen in all the previous years. We'll talk about the flow. We'll talk about how that's going to play out and what we're going to see here this year. And let's take a look also at your keys brought to us by fr our friends at blackinkdisc.com the premium disc golf store and it is the same course it's the same property and you are throwing up and down these amazing rolling hills so endurance is definitely going to be required if you want to stay at the top control distance you need to make sure you're getting yourself to the landing zone or making sure you're getting past ob if you're trying to be aggressive and then C1 and regulation. It really is important for these players to be accurate with their fairway shots and get themselves an opportunity to birdie. And there is that slight breeze that the players will need to consider. It's tough to know exactly what the wind is doing when you're down in these valleys as opposed to throwing some of these fairways up at the top of these hills. Oh, wow. okay. What a fighter. Yeah, that somehow pushes all the way through and that is past the basket by a few feet. Yeah. This is not ideal to land on this right side. Rebecca's going to have so many more trees in her way as opposed to what Owen had over on that left side.
So we'll have more trees to contend with on the left side now. Yeah. Probably a low ceiling. Let's see if Rebecca will have a look for her birdie. Haley was just a stroke short or just missing out in that sudden death playoff. She plays this course really well. It sets up really nicely for her game. I mean, think of distance throwers, Holland Hanley. Although she didn't birdie hole one, like we see most of our competitors, she's been able to pick up four birdies here in the front nine. Off to a great start on Hanley bogey free four under through eight. Hundred percent C one X putting. That's really solid. And in the past we have seen our distance players going for the basket in one shot here on this hole. They can reach it. It's downhill. They want to carry it over the OB, but you have to really trust your disc. So Raven will be next to the basket, looking to tap in for par. King's first attempt at birdie comes up short. not going to call hole one easy, but you definitely are thinking birdie on this one. As you said, this is even drivable to give yourself an eagle look if you're very aggressive. And Rebecca was pinched off there, really didn't have the angle to give it an aggressive bid, so she's looking at a par. Her own should be a birdie on her scorecard. And Rebecca is in for the par. In about 10 minutes, Cat Merch looking to defend her title in Jonesboro. We'll be right back. Backyard kingdom, not so different from your own. A prince of southern royalty was born for plastic stone. There's nothing more that you can do. Some say we're hidden, unless you know where to look. Hidden? No. This is where we stand up straight and tell you who we are, and where we put others first. This is where college football and barbecue are a season in the same, and there's always time for one more lap around the park. This is where we ask, what else can we accomplish together? Come find out. Be a part of this. This is Jonesboro, Arkansas. Now you know. 
where to look. The newest disc to my collection is the Drive. Passion, fierce, these are things that I feel when I play disc golf, and Drive for me is something that I feel so strongly. I was looking for something in between like a Surge SS and a Zeus. I wanted something that could get me like the full S flight without having to try as hard as I would with the Zeus. Finding myself feeling a lot more confident with this disc in my hand in the woods than I've ever been before. This just felt like such a natural step to create my dream driver. The 2024 Jonesboro Open is presented by Westside Discs. Disc golf never sleeps. Plenty of players were in the Jonesboro area along with other places in Arkansas along the path of totality, taking in the action back on Monday. Seemed like quite the reprieve and a great break. players out there taking it in in some capacity kind of Hamas and his entire crew out there having a good time Gannon Burr out on Instagram giving us a little pro tip for how to film Ali Smith also out there said she was enjoying a picnic during the eclipse hopefully many of you had a good look or a chance to take it all in it's awesome to see so many of our players finding their way around that section of the country so that they could be within that path. And speaking of the eclipse, thanks to our friends over at FlightFactoryDisc.com. You can use the code ECLIPSE to get you free shipping throughout this weekend. Again, over at FlightFactoryDisc.com, code ECLIPSE will give you free shipping. Raven with her second shot. Where'd you go? Okay. Hole two is a tough birdie to get. It's a par three, six, 360 feet uphill. Yeah, so. this was one of the few changes that were made to the actual holes on the course. Yes, they got renumbered but very few changes were made. This is one of them, and we've yet to see a birdie on hole number two. I'm gonna say I'm just, I'm not that surprised by it. It's 360, slightly uphill. This is a very difficult birdie to get on the FPO side. Yeah, it probably plays at least 400 feet. And then when you're throwing uphill, the way that you have to your release point has to be so perfect to carry the flight and not hyzer out too early. So Scoggins will take the bogey after that par attempt comes up short. Captain for par. On the other side of the break, Cat Merch, he's off. Nice. It's a lot rougher texture than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be something. Hamster? I had a good <laughs> The number one reason I switched from bag to cart is pretty simple. 
takes weight off of my back, easier to play a course. I realized that the cart became something I really needed when little things would happen. I'd pick up my bag and my elbow would hurt. Using a cart decreases the bending over, the weight on my lower back. Decide to go with Suga and seeing that my sciatic nerve is gone and I don't need to worry. Only one thing I have to worry about to get birdie because my Suga done it all for me. Jonathan. Jonathan! 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 Wow! Amazing! Woo! Skulle du visa? Hi! Yeah, yeah, check this pad out. I think you should use your wrist a little bit more. Why not? Is he okay? Nah, he's fine. PDJ reinvests membership funding into support for programs like the Competition Endowment, Youth and Education Program, and Marco Polo Program, all of which help grow the sport in communities around the world. Get started today. Visit pdj.com slash join. Southern royalty was born for plastic stone. There's nothing more that you can do. Brought back by popular demand. Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Discs that you already know and love now available in lighter weights. Z-Lite. More distance with less effort. Pound's the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. remember that moment from last year one of the most emotional outbursts that we've seen on the pro tour yeah, it. Real pretty big right weekend here. to pick up her first ever disco but pro tour like win and it's fun we see cat merch you know every weekend she's such a character she's goofy she's funny but then to see her kind of overcome some demons or overcome the hurdles to get her first big win last year it was an epic finish a great speech i mean she had tears in her eyes i think she even handed her trophy off to her niece and it was just an amazing moment for her Next on the team, from Perno, Estonia, 
Kristen Tatar. Next on the tee from Houghton, Finn, Norway, Lucky Lawrenson. So all of these layups that we're seeing, they have to throw it just short of 300 and feet. And our card from Rosebud, Arkansas, Kat Merch. At going with the sidearm. To mention, it's much more open on that left side. Also, just going for that layup. Successful layup at that by Cat Merch. We caught up with her at the press conference yesterday, and of course, she was colorful. <laughs> Well, 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 if it isn't macho merch. What's your question? Oh yeah, I got to spend some time with my mom, my stepdad, uh, my dog Bruce, who's a half Mastiff, half St. Bernard. He uh, will eat you. Been digging in the dirt, just getting dirty. Looking for agates, boy. Mentally, I am unhinged and I'm ready to learn about golf. I've been throwing it, throwing some of my sidearms just absolutely sideways, and I haven't been putting the way that I know how to putt. I've been really mental about it, um, which sucks because I think I'm good at putting. So, interesting to see her open up with a sidearm off the tee of hole number one, <laughs> just like really going after it immediately. Okay. Yep, just setting the bar. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> and it is, it, it's an interesting route to take, a sidearm finishing off to the right. So she is left with the shot that's in the middle of the fairway and she has this one small tree in her way. But I think a backhand layup would have suited her better. Headed right for the trees. Not even sure if that's inside circle two. So she's going to have to find her, her way to the basket from there. Rebecca Cox with a birdie look. The yeah. elevated pin. Count it. Negating the bogey. She picked up on one. Hole three is a tough birdie to get, especially for somebody that isn't known for throwing a sidearm. I was waiting to see who was throwing, but it looks like they're waiting for another hole to finish. Or just not to distract them. Looks like Lucky's heading over to her disc on the left. And our leader, Holland Hanley, over on 10. The solid approach shot. T of four with Rebecca. Okay, has it dialed in. She'll have a very short look for Birdie. Yeah, and look how wide open this approach is compared to what we saw Cat Merch attempt. 
Another great approach there from Kristen. Hanley with a long birdie look on 10. Which used to be hole 18. Very daunting finishing hole in previous years. And now it's smack dab in the middle of the course. Ananda had gone long off of the tee shot. So this is her third. Looks like she's in great position to still walk away with a par. Raven Klein on the TF4. Just trying to put it up the center of the fairway here on this par five. And well done by Klein. And we're fortunate enough to have Brian Earhart out on the ground. Brian, talk to us about the conditions that they're seeing here in the early goings. Man, Terry, I feel like this place just gets better and better year after year. I mean, I, we heard from Brad Peets during the press conference just how much work goes into actually getting this place tournament ready and it just looks phenomenal it's it's just sunshine not, not a cloud in the sky wind is kind of blustery about 10 to 20 miles an hour so pretty uh inconsistent so to speak but uh yeah it's just going to be a great day and i think the players are used to the wind so we'll see how it goes thanks for the insight as you saw our can of current conditions and also cap merch able to find a lane right to the basket Short comeback putt for Hanley for par and not. Wow, and that will be her first blemish on the scorecard as Hanley from short range gets pushed out with the wind. hole two. Brian, this is one of the significant changes on the course. Talk to us about it. Oh man, it says 360, but it plays closer to 400. Big mature tree on the right side kind of blocks anything uh, from getting to it on hyzer. You kind of have to slide it under the canopy. Other tough part about this shot is if you're throwing the backhand, you have no room on the left side to actually throw a big flex shot. So it's got to be some sort of bullet hyzer flip or some sort of hyzer that kind of skips to short circle one. I mean, I, I'm seeing MPO players have a tough time get here, so we'll see how this scores for the FPO. Appreciate the insight, Brian. I am seeing this as, and I was already thinking, whether it's a shorter tee or a slightly different pin, I, I see this as being a very, very difficult birdie for the FPO division to access. So far, we have not seen any today. didn't look like Kristen was forcing anything to happen. She wasn't trying to get that full flex shot. It was just a nice straight flight with a hyzer at the end. Big shots coming in just short of the circle.
And being just short, all these players are going to be left with an uphill putt to the elevated basket. Pushed off to the right side, that wind might bring the tree into play. Rebecca Cox throwing her third on the par five. It'll be on the short right side of the pin. Now labeled hole 11 is where we see Holland Hanley with her drive. Of course, that used to be the start of the course, hole number one. Now number to 11 as Ravens throwing her third on the par five. And that comes in short, not taking advantage of the incredible drive that she initially had off the tee. It's fun to remember these holes, you know, as they're renumbered, it's it's tough to know the order exactly, especially on this first round. But these holes are iconic and it is interesting that the tournament renumbered them and it's going to really play into how these players pace themselves through the course, you know, where the drama is. You know, now we have a hole eight, what was hole 18 now in the middle of the course. So players could find themselves you know, fighting back at the end rather than last year playing really well and then having to just make it through those last very tough holes. It's going to be fun to see the dynamic and how the course really plays out this year. Merch forehand approach brings her well inside the circle. be our lone birdie of the day. Kristen, the jumper. And the wind having its way with it. Kristen low on the par attempt. And immediately, not only is that going to maybe cause a little bit of doubt, you have to wonder, will her and the rest of the card think more about how aggressive they want to be in these windy conditions? You saw her with a jumper from circle two to then leaving herself with a putt. She actually had to think about, and she's going to walk away with a bogey. Big mistake by Kristen early here. And she did stand over that putt much longer than she normally does. Studying the wind, trying to figure out how it would affect her putt. King with her third. And just deep of the pin. Short look for birdie. Mundahano is trying to take the solo lead. She would have done so, but comes up short. Holland's even closer. She can reclaim the solo lead with the birdie make here. And that is short and a possible roll, but it checks up still inside the bullseye. Holland putter cooled off in the last few holes. Rebecca for birdie. So 
pull three. This is that sidearm shot tucked around that large tree on the right. That's really the one place you don't want to be is short and right. Yeah, sometimes you don't even see players getting out of those trees in one shot. So you want to make sure you're clear. There's a putt. That's for Birdie for Haley King. It's tough to judge the distance on a backhand turnover. Sai uh, ends up short, but she's going to have an open second shot. can't weak arm it. And that's exactly what Cat Merch did. This is 324 feet. So it's a full distance shot with a sidearm. You want to make sure that you're just powering it as hard as you can to at least get basket high and then let the disc do the work as it finishes and fades off to the right. And that two is short and in trouble. The one mistake you cannot make is short and right on this hole. And it looked like all four players were headed that way. Some got a little more favorable kick out than others, but not the place to be. Haley on hole number five. This is the spot of the playoff between Haley and Cat Merch last year. Hanley on 12. Gets through the initial gap without a problem. Oh. That drags over to the right side. That can be trouble. Yeah, if she were to punch out through, maybe she'll have an easy approach. See, score is very tight at two under as our players are halfway through the course and beyond. H. Pierce was off to a hot start, slowed down a little bit to get back to the two under. Holland Hanley, we saw not long ago, was at four under, bogey free, and now has fallen back to two down. King will have a short tap in to save the par. And Brian, we know that short right side is trouble, but did they clean it up a little more this year? You know, it's been cleaned out pretty significantly. I, I've seen players get really creative from that spot. I've seen players even flip the disc upside down and slide it like they were playing shuffleboard. Um, and clearly not, not a bad option for Cat either. Pretty, pretty open look. really does look so much more open than what we've seen. These are easy pitch outs. Kat's going to leave herself with a tester, though. She went pretty far past the basket with her sidearm approach. So albeit still not a good place to be, it feels as if this isn't as punishing as it has been in years past. But we see another pitch out there by Lorenzen. Rebecca able to approach right next to the pin as well. She's looking for a par. Gonna put the putter to the test here on three for Merch. This is for par. And they roll away potential, and it's doing just that. It's 
Going to check up inside 15 feet, but always a possibility, and that's true on so many of the greens out on this course. So quickly, Merch will step up and put it in for bogey. And it seemed like the wind picked up right as she stepped up to that putt. See the confidence, even though the wind could be playing some mind games. A very steady wind here for Sai as she goes for this par putt. And the important thing there is when you're throwing into a headwind, just keeping your disc nice and flat, not allowing the nose to be exposed to the wind. That's going to really get the disc to lift. So if you just Throw something more straight and more flat. It's gonna slice right through the wind. But that can be tough on these elevated baskets when you do need a little bit of that nose up to carry into the chains. Haley on the TF6. put her in great positioning. Certainly don't want to come in short and left on that tee shot either. So King should love that spot. Back with Hanley on 12 for second. It's climbing up and over the hill, so it's tough to judge the distance. take a look at hole number four. Par five, 750 feet. And you see the challenge right off of the tee. You have to make sure that you're hitting this gap. Because it's a par five, you want to have the distance off of the tee shot, but I think accuracy is more important. But once you get through those trees, it's pretty wide open. And I think more to the left is going to give you that better, the more open shot start to climb the hill here and it's just such a beautiful landscape all these massive trees but they provide such an obstacle and as we crest the hill we're seeing players land around here then you have to control that third shot as you get to the pin you want to stay away from that tree on the right hand side and then the ground starts to slope down and away from the pin so anything coming in too fast will go long in the pin or even find those trees. So you want to lay up short and allow the disc to do the work. That looks great. When really affected the end of that flight, uh, did that elevator drop at the very end? Holland has a birdie look on 12. Man, three missed putts in a row. After we mentioned, she was 100% from C1X. It won't be too bad, but definitely took off some distance of what she would, would have gotten otherwise. left center side of fairway for Kristen. Tiger Borth with a birdie look. Solid putt from Tiger. So with the mistake that we saw in the old hole 18 there where she had a double bogey, otherwise a very, very clean Solid looking start there for Tiger. Oh, 
held a little straighter. Catching up with Cynthia Ricciotti on the tee of 13. Obi fence line on that left side. I think you're going to see plenty of players talking to the wind today, asking for it to lift or carry or push down, wherever the case might be. Haley's second shot is going to come up a little short. She may be able to reach out and still have a look for Birdie. Ananda with her second. Working to get to the top of the hill. See if Valerie Mundahano has a better wind read than what Ricciotti dealt with. That's going to be short and left. So this card sitting at two under, so all playing very consistent to one another. And Holland's going to be short and left. Seems you really have to play the wind on on that hole, playing it much wider than would be comfortable. commentary when cats arrive. She's doing our job. Beautiful overview of this hole and, and the shape that it makes. You see the card in front just at that layup zone at the top of our screen. over here on the left side. So she needs to get up to the top of the hill, play it wide right of that tree and just allow it to finish. Or punch through the tree, hopefully. room to recover if she does have a clear shot she can still get a chance at a birdie great progress for Lorenzen Maybe more importantly, it should give her a look to the pin. There's something about cresting this hill and giving yourself a chance to be able to see the basket as Mundahano is trying to push to that three under, become an outright leader. Her putt is off the mark. King, the birdie look. She has the room. And not able to cash it in. Hanley opportunity to get to three under. <laughs> Currently, we're seeing two of our Finnish competitors out in front. Evelina Salonen along with Heide Laine. Both sitting at three under. Jennifer Allen sits at two under. 
Something I notice about those top three competitors, uh, three of the longest throwers in our game, maybe finding a way to battle the winds, maybe able to stable up and, and use discs with a little bit uh, more stability to them to fight some of these windy conditions. As we've seen, there's been some struggles on the putting green as the swirling winds are affecting all of the players. Yeah, and that's fun to think about uh, the strategy of our bigger throwers and the advantage that they have with the disc selection. Like you mentioned, throwing things that are more overstable, something more uh, dependable, something more consistent but then they are still able to get that distance because they have so much power. Whereas players with average distance really have to manipulate the flight and throw something more understable and get the full flex. It's not the best kind of throw if you're having to deal with the wind. Distance control, very important here on the shot. Tester. She'll have a downhill putt. But a putt that I would expect her to be going for. It's not too risky. Just barely making it over the OB at the bottom of the hill. Couldn't do it much better than that. Obstructed from a knee, and Kristen has just the right amount of touch to put her right next to the pin. Incredible shot. It'd be an incredible shot in calm conditions, but add some more wind. And the fact that it was able to make that shape, and it didn't seem like the wind affected it at all. Really great recovery. Big thanks to our friends at Zuka for rolling that replay. Kristen, short range look now for Birdie over to Lorenzen. She too with a solid approach. Lucky's on one side, Kristen's on the other, but they're both basket high. So they're even with the pin and not having to deal with the slope in, in any way. Solonen adds another birdie to the scorecard. She is four under. 100% C1X putting for Evelina Solonen. We know her drives are always uh, powerful and she doesn't have a problem necessarily with distance in that capacity. It's a matter of what does she look like on the green and today off to a great start. But she did not birdie hole four. Pretty interesting. Cap Merch will cash that one in. I do feel like this is a gettable hole. This is a hole that you would expect players to get the birdie on. There's room to recover, even if you didn't have the best tee shot or maybe not the best second shot, there's still potential to get yourself back and get a birdie. Renson in for birdie. You'd also have to think in windy conditions such as this, some of your more confident and we'll say uh, powerful putters will have an advantage out here as well, trying to fight the wind. Mm -hmm. 
And we're going to take a quick break on the network. We'll be right back. I'm David Wiggins, and in 2016, I set the disc golf world distance record with a throw of 1,108 feet. Whether I'm out in the field measuring a max distance throw or on the course checking the elevation change for an upshot, I rely on the Eagle Seeker 360 to give me accurate distances. It's the only rangefinder on the market that measures in feet, yards, and meters. It's USB-C rechargeable and features a lithium-ion battery. Visit EagleSeeker360.com to get yours today. Wysocki, ladies and gentlemen. Behold the Eagles Crossing Disc Golf Course. A sanctuary where the ordinary transforms into the extraordinary. As each disc takes flight, destiny intertwines with the flight path. But beware, brave souls. For the course harbors challenges that even the boldest must confront. Yet, fear not. For victory and camaraderie are your companions on this voyage. Visit EaglesCrossingDiscGolf.com And recently released, we have our Disc Golf Pro Tour trading cards. They're available on the Pro Shop. You can pull out autograph cards or relic cards with pieces of tournament used discs embedded. Scan the QR code to shop now. Would you be lucky to get a Lucky Lorenzen card? Beautiful drive. That is just ideal. This tee shot, it, you're throwing through this tunnel. There's a low ceiling, and then it starts a, a slight climb uphill once you get past that log that we see there on the left. Terrible kick as that heads to the left side off the fairway for Merch. And I had to check to be sure, but we have not seen any birdies on this hole today. So the, the goal should just be par. You want to stay out of trouble on the tee shot. Watch out, watch out. Look at this. She goes. Wow, long the pin, but it circles back through the trees. Thank you, did it on purpose. And that wasn't on purpose? <laughs> Haley King with her second. We'll see how aggressive Haley wants to get with that look. Brian, talk to us about this roller that we just saw from Sayananda. Honestly, with the wind, I think it's a great play, especially with that little headwind kind of making sure the disc checks up at the end. She had the right amount of cut on it. She actually missed that log in the middle by like five inches. So it was kind of a perfect storm to even sneak through the backside. So yeah, she's got 20 feet for a birdie. Awesome shot. Love the creativity there by Ananda. And 
And this is the answer to my question a moment ago about how aggressive she would be. That's going to be a layup for King. has work to do just to say bogey shrug of the shoulders And the forehand approach coming in from Kristen goes just deep of the pin. Evelina, our leader, sitting at four under. Could be trouble. Lorenzen's going to pitch it right next to the basket. Not messing around at all with an aggressive birdie putt. Instead, just going to go for the par. <laughs> Merch for bogey. Quite the vibe she had when she last completed this hole in competition where she ultimately won in the playoff against Haley King. Merch is going to walk away with a double bogey. Meanwhile, Sayananda with a lone birdie of the day. Yeah. Count it. Roller pays off for Ananda. And to execute such an accurate roller. I mean, it was within inches of trouble a few times throughout its rolling. I was going to say flight, but no. <laughs> throughout its rolling uh, adventures. Fantastic birdie. just plays out so nicely. The fact that it flies through the air, it almost looks like a full drive and then gets into the rolling position, has enough angle on it that it's able to get past that log and then enough momentum to carry up the hill, keeps rolling and even getting through these trees at the end. I mean, making Brian dance, just a fantastic shot. I don't know if you'd be able to replicate that in a hundred shots, but I'm expecting to see Cy that do that again in the next few rounds. Maybe not as uh, exciting, maybe a little more pure. That drive was powered by Nakua, lifestyle power, as we head over to Salonen, throwing her second. We'll have that left to save the par. Klein with a birdie look. Count it, just inside the circle. Uphill look for Klein. Size tee shot on six. I can't stress enough, you would rather be wide to the right versus tight left on this hole 
because if you come up short and left, there's just really no shortcut to the basket. That will be on the left side for Luque. small hill right in front of the tee really plays with the player's mind and throwing it maybe a little bit too high rather than the more direct shot. It really comes down to those second shots and if they're able to get the birdie on hole six. Great shot by Rebecca Cox. Evelina to save par, to keep the clean scorecard and remain at four under. A firm bid, but too far to the right. Avelina will fall back to three under par. And Rebecca will tap in for birdie. And we see that cluster at three under. Lime, along with Allen and Solonen. Jen Allen, clean scorecard. Three birdies, no bogeys. Okay, flex it around the first stand of trees. Not enough height, that one gets brought down, so she'll have a long look. Likely a layup coming from there. As I was just mentioning, Jennifer Allen, bogey free through 13. Looks like she has 67% C1X putting. So there's room for improvement, yeah, but a very steady round that she has going. I was just thinking about managing the win, putting herself in position, maybe playing to the correct side of the basket so that she can be some conservative if she doesn't feel comfortable going after maybe a long birdie look, being able to pitch it right next to the pin, things of that nature. Just looks like a very consistent, solid round going for Jennifer Allen. Ananda. Trying to bring this from left to right. Not quite enough drag. But that's the error you want to make. You don't want to pull it too tight and then have to fight yourself out of those trees. The shot really sets up better for a sidearm. So make sure you're getting distance of the pin and then allow the disc to fade back to the basket. It's tucked around to the right. Just like that. There is no doubt on Kristen's approaching that we've seen here today. And I do think it 
really pays off to have both the backhand and the sidearm on this course. There's a lot of second shots that really favor that flight, that left to right fade. And you just have to know in practice what the distance is. You have to know that spot in the sky or the branch to aim for so that the disc is, has enough room to clear that short corner and get around so that you have a putt. Just a lot of those blind approaches. So Lorenzen's third is coming up. She's going with a forehand. That'll be a little left uh, on there for the par putt. On hole 10 with Evelina. Mm -hmm. Good shot, Amy. Thank you. This is a birdie bid, and King doesn't find any metal. third. These are with short range for her par. Cat Merch also moments ago had pitched out. Not really much to work with there. So Merch right next to the pin. And speaking of Cat Merch, Brian, did you catch up with her caddy earlier before the round even got started? Did you get any insight there? Yeah, I did, Terry. I talked to James Lisi, who's just a fantastic Masters player who helped her take down the victory last year. And I said, any any changes to the game plan this year, James? Are we taking down a victory? He just looked at me and said, you know, Brian, as long as there's no left-handed drives coming out like last year, I think we'll be pretty happy. All right, so he has some thoughts in mind as to what needs to happen or not as Luque is off the top band going to be picking up a bogey. And it felt rushed, Val. Sai normally takes a little bit more time and is very, very methodical and diligent. And maybe she just saw a little break in the wind but that felt rush compared to her normal putting routine yeah I would agree and I'm, I'm wondering if the wind is playing in these players minds where if they have that lull they're forcing themselves to go quicker and you see even that putt Kristen thinking a little bit longer on it and it almost blew out of the pin regardless so it's gusty here on this basket Own has a bogey look. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Okay. Well, uh, as <laughs> she says, that's in. Not by much. <laughs> uh, Own doesn't feel like she deserves that one, but it's in. Haley also from short range. What is going on? Struggles everywhere on the course. Many of them, I think, wind-aided, but still some 
significant challenges out here. Val, what are we doing on seven? Well, this one is completely exposed to the wind, and I'm expecting to see all the players going for the big tee shot. You see it's over 300 feet to clear the OB and get yourself in a good position on this side hill. The second shot heads up the hill and then shapes off to the, to the right. So you want to make sure you're throwing it the full height of the hill to get to the top and then give yourself a good look at the basket. A perfect second shot on that blind approach will give you a putt, but you can see how risky that can be as the basket slopes down and to the right. We of course see rollaways every single year if you're not able to make the putt. Off to the left, like you see here from Kristen, that is going to be the most ideal to give yourself a good angle for the second shot. power drives into a headwind. They need to make sure that they're releasing it at the perfect height, the appropriate angle for whatever disc they've chosen. Yeah, not sure that was an intended roller. It heads into the ditch. the wind just having its way with these drives, especially of the last two with Luke as well as Ananda. Solonen with her second shot on 10. And solid progress for Solonen. I'm going to throw it out to Brian as we're seeing Arcana current conditions. It says 15 miles an hour, Brian, but this wind, uh, what do you feel like it's doing to all these players? Yeah, what I think is tough right now is it's just one of those days where it can get to calm. There were a few moments during this round walking this course already where it got to zero or maybe one or two miles an hour of wind, and within a matter of seconds, it kicks back up to 20 and even feeling like 25. So that's why these players are second guessing everything because they're like, they're not really sure when the wind's gonna pick back up or die. Those inconsistent wind gusts, well, okay. And Sai, who's already not necessarily loving how things are going for her, you see the frustration as her hat blows off. It almost feels as if size in a slightly different headspace than normal. I know I just talked about her routine on the previous hole, but just in general, it, it, something seems a little different with Sai today. Solid approach that'll give her a look to the basket. Likely a layup though from there. Is 
is a tricky route, especially being this short on the fairway. There's that darker clump of tree in the middle of our screen. You can go on the right hand side and punch through for the more direct route to the basket. And you see now she's changing her run up. So I think back up the hill in the, the typical fairway that we see most players playing from. And a beautiful shot. Goggins on the tee of 10. Oh, and a favorable tree kick. And she's gonna get the green flag. What I think that did is slightly redirected her to stay more in the center of the fairway. It looked like that was pushing off to the right. Right now, Owen Scoggins is second in tour standings with 475 points. Missy Gannon taking down the first and only major of the year so far that we've seen out in front at 479 points. And as I just mentioned, Missy Gannon uh, needs to lift. And that's going to be out of bounds to the right. She clears the water, but doesn't make it in bounds. And Solonen with a great bounce back. Wind pushed that down mid-flight, but Krista makes it to the top of the hill. And really any shot that lands outside the circle, it's more than likely just an easy layup. You don't see players getting too risky on these Huts. <laughs> but merch, yeah, we'll have a decision to make, right? Yeah, is that's that what you're thinking? <laughs> It's tough when you're landing right there on the edge of the circle. It, it just depends on how you're feeling that day, what the wind is doing, be what angle that you're looking at the basket and how severely downhill it is behind the pin. But really, if there's any doubt in your mind and you're stepping up to a dangerous putt like that, you should just lay up. I, you're not going to regret it if you'd lay it just right underneath the pin. What was that as it goes up against the OB wall and then slides back inbounds? Mundahano safe. You don't see that happen. Wow. If you are laying up on a risky pin or a risky green like this, you need to just focus on the angle that the disc is landing underneath the pin. You don't want to regret not focusing on that layup because you could end up rolling away anyways. Even as that pops up, Slight uh, holding of her breath there for Luque. Yeah. 
And Merch goes after it. Left side corner pocket for the birdie. Kristen's gonna come over as she appreciates the effort. Another missed putt by Ananda. with the cleanup for Lorenzen, along with Tatar. They're gonna head down the hill for their next tee shot. Another look at Cat Merch. That's a birdie as we had to break. We'll be right back. With this collaboration with Discraft and Grip, the goal is to make the best bag in disc golf on and off the course. This bag is designed beyond the course. This is made for the travel, this is made for the tour. It's really made for the athlete of the sport. So many new changes that I can't wait to, to show off and, and others see and use and utilize. I believe disc golfers will love this new bag. Some say we're hidden, unless you know where to look. Hidden? No. This is where we stand up straight and tell you who we are, and where we put others first. This is where college football and barbecue are a season in the same, and there's always time for one more lap around the park. This is where we ask, what else can we accomplish together? Come find out. Be a part of this. This is Jonesboro, Arkansas. Now you know where to look. course we've got the ccdg cast going on round one live on youtube we're at central coast we'll also have the final round if you're a dgn pro subscriber ian and friends all hanging out giving you the action that is for round one on youtube and then pro subscription on championship sunday i think you'd say let's watch some disc golf pretty sure that's what he'd say right about now I'm here for it as we're watching Kristen park it right next to the basket. Drop in birdie coming for Kristen. And okay, in circle two, or excuse me, inside circle one. Sorry, Terry, messed you up there. But I'm thinking that's a got to get par three birdie, one of the easier par threes on the course to get.
Good skip for Ananda inside the bullseye. Solonen, long birdie look on 11. Whoa. And the wind having its way with it. That's going to be a huge comeback putt that she's going to be left with. Oh, gets the birdie on the par five. This is similar to the putt she just made. But too much hyzer. And this is scary. It slopes severely downhill. And more so, it can bring the wood line and danger into play here and you know, prohibit possibly an open line to the basket. And that's exactly what's happened. There's the roll to 25 or 30 feet, and then there's also the fact that you can bring some of those branches into play. Merch, plenty of work left here just to save par. And she cans it. Merch with the comeback putt. That was huge for Kat. <laughs> it, the first initial birdie putt was almost a, a gotta make to keep up with the field, but she needed this par, absolutely. Yeah. Lorenzen in for birdie. Ananda, she'll step up and cash that in for birdie. And no putting required as Kristen will just tap it in. Much less work for the three players to get their birdie. And Kat really putting a lot of pressure on herself just to get the par. She wasn't as punished as I was expecting back there. Now Salonen trying to save her par. Back near the starting point on the course. So we head over to hole number nine. We have Jen Allen on 15. Does it have just the right pace? It does. So Allen will have that look for birdie. scorecard for Jennifer Allen four under through 14 holes she has the birdie look currently on hole number 15 and as I scroll I believe that is the only remaining clean scorecard Jennifer Allen's four under the only clean scorecard left on the course We had to some tricky holes with this reconfiguring a lot of these over the water carries and OB surrounding the basket. Birdie attempt is low out of the hands of Allen. She's waiting just for the right wind read there and she's not gonna cash it in. She'll have a tap in par though. And Rebecca Cox inside the bullseye on 11. So this is old hole 17. 
and it's shortened up. The T is much closer. It bends around to the right, but the biggest change here, there's a, a hazard. So to the left of the pin in that clump of trees that we do see right off of the, the T, off to the left, it's a hazard. So if you land in there, you don't take relief, but you have to take a penalty stroke. So these players need to play these sidearm shots or the backhand turnover. They have to play them tight. Make sure they're getting around the corner, but you don't want to go too far straight. Or I'm thinking if you cut it too hard to the right on a backhand shot, we've seen the rollers pick up today for Sai. So she puts that one right into the ground and it stays. right in that hazard. Gailey on the tee of 11. This is gonna swing right to the pin. And Haley, pin high inside circle one with a birdie look. Evelina's second shot on 12. birdie look. That one she cashes in. And this was old hole one. And so to see the players now attacking this pin halfway through the course, they're warmed up. I'm expecting oh, yeah. to see a lot more birdies than as it was in previous years of being hole one, your first drive of the day. And Evelina has this left for birdie. She grabs chain, but not enough for it to fall in. Uh, I want to throw it out to Brian. Brian, this is one of the course changes that we've seen. Why don't you break it down for us? Yeah, you know, they put the tee pad pretty much in the ideal landing zone to where forehand is un undoubtedly the, the best option. Uh, personally, it feels like it leaves a little bit to be desired. You almost want to see players bend the corner with that challenging turnover backhand, but there's really not much of a, a temptation to do that unless your forehand's not uh, as solid as you want it to be. And also the hazard area kind of brings the players to throw that stable sidearm as well. Um, so yeah, I think players should be running birdies at this all week. Uh, interested to see how it scores overall. I have no idea. Apparently got like some special cactuses or Appreciate something. Appreciate the insight, Brian. I put my foot in there, and they're like, you can't do that. Two strokes, you did Kristen will tie for the lead at four under with that birdie. That 
is their first go around at the new look of hole number nine. We're halfway through. We're going to take a quick break on the network. We'll be right back. This is the game changer. Step onto the course with the pure premium disc golf bag, adding a touch of glamorous flair to your play. Don't miss the exclusive pre-sale at puredisc.net for the best price. Upgrade your game, upgrade your look. Three current favorites from Innova Champion Discs at Power Grip USA, the Champion Rollo, Halo Sidewinder, and the iDie Firebird. Shop Innova right now at PowerGripUSA.com. I think this golfing can improve our community in many ways. It brings people together. That maybe some of these kids who feel a little bit lost could find something like disc golf, find friends, find people to come together and play the sport. Encouraging people to work together kids to know one another, love one another. A way for these kids to have a really fun thing to do together. I think that's what we need in the world, love one another and do life together. The 2024 Prodigy Signature Series are here. The Signature Series explores the evolution of flight. Get yours March 22nd on prodigydisc.com and at your... Welcome back, T of 10. Kristen sitting at four under, a co-leader. Exactly what you want to do off the tee here. I'm going to keep talking about it, but the renumbering, you know, this was hole 18. Now seeing it being played in the middle of the course just makes it feel less daunting. You know, players were heading into this hole just to finish their, their round off strong, hoping not to lose strokes. But being in the middle of the course, I feel like you're you're more aggressive. You're more in that attack mode. Need that nice, clean tee shot. Wow. That really fought its way through. Typically, you see players catching those trees and dropping down into that ditch. So he's going to be in a great position. is OB on that left side. So Kat got a nice ricochet off of that tree to get her back to the center of the fairway. Avelina on the tee of 13. And that's gonna go deep of the pin. Earlier, we saw so many players coming up short and left. Avelina, no problems with the power. Right now, Jennifer Allen, along with Kristen Tatar, both sitting at four under. Evelina, very close at three under. And Valerie and Holland sitting at two. Yeah. And when you see that post in the ground, 
That actually indicates that they are 500 feet from the pin. So that should give you guys an idea. That's the blue one. I believe the ones with the red uh, indicators on them uh, are 250 feet to the pin. One of the nice touches that I really love about this course. High keeps it low enough to get past the next set of trees. After a big skip, Evelina has that birdie look. And now we'll be looking at a par comeback putt. When you land there on your drive, you've got a couple of options. Yeah. Luke Egg going right up the gut. Anything that gets you to or past that set of trees, I feel like, is a good second shot. You don't want to have to still be dealing with those as you're throwing your third. And we just saw that by Cy and Luke K. Here's Klein. And that's going to be up there nice and close for Raven. Problems for Avelina with the cleanup. She'll remain at three under. Short of ideal. Roach pays off as Raven's going to pick up the birdie on 12. Having a great opening round. There's still some work for Kristen to do to make sure that she can get out of the gap with trees. This pin has OB left, right, and beyond if you throw it too far. I see a lot of upshots left short. But you need to make sure that you're getting inside the circle or just outside the bullseye because this basket's so exposed to the wind. That's going to push to the right side and appears to be out of bounds. Yeah, she just did not get that full extension. She sawed it off. It was just a little early. Brian, can you confirm that it's out of bounds? And also, was it brought in a little tighter this year on the green? Yeah, OB in general looks like it's uh, really tight. Yeah, Terry, it doesn't, doesn't look good for Kristen, unfortunately. I have 250 feet left to the pin. And a solid approach shot by Cat Merch. Solid in TF14. Sai has just the right amount of effort. A short look left for Birdie. And the 
Lorenzen opts for the standstill to get just deep of the pin. A birdie would bring her to two under. Raven leaves this one very wide. Needs some help from the wind, but it spikes down too sharply to get the skip. And Rebecca Cox connects from long range for birdie. And that's putting four birdies together in a row for Cox, five of the last six. Wow, very colorful scorecard there in the middle of this course. Nice to see you're racking up some birdies. Kristen needs this to save par. Kristen out of bounds by about four, three or four meters or so and a mistake that's gonna cost her. She's looking at bogey on hole number 10, now merch for birdie. She was eyeing that disc down. Sit down, that had full potential to continue rolling and head for that out of bounds. And coincidentally, this is one of the flatter greens on the course and it's still got a roll. Well, she said it in the press conference, her putting has not been where she wants it to be. And I think that's come through a few times here today. Sai is able to connect for birdie. And Lorenzen is also in for the birdie. She's gonna be within two of our leader, Jen Allen, as Luke will move to two under. And this hole still providing the drama, even though it's not at the end of the round. We're seeing the two strokes being handed between several players. Raven looking for back-to-back -back birdies on 12 and 13. That one's off the top of the basket, though. Let's take a look at hole number 11, which used to be hole number one, Val. Par three, just short of 400 feet. It's right there. It seems like such a wide open shot, but when the wind picks up, can make the flight very difficult to execute. We see players that don't get the, the perfect angle or the perfect width, catching trees on the right hand side, a really there's a lot of space to work with, and this should be one that you can attack off of the tee. You just want to give yourself an opportunity to try and go for the birdie. Jen Allen, currently your outright leader at four under after the bogey from Kristen. As we head into these holes, the mindset should shift and there's a lot of birdies that could be had. We see many players stringing up two to three to four birdies here starting from hole 10 and on. This beautiful shot.
see the, they have a tailwind on this tee shot. It's going to make the discs fly with a little bit more stability. You see that finish off to the left for Sai. just outside of the circle looking to bounce back after the bogey on the previous hole. Merch also looking to do the same. And Merch on the right side of the pin. Okay. And that seemed like the appropriate adjustment, knowing that the tailwind's going to bring your disc back to the left, but it didn't seem to be blowing as hard for Cat. That was Evelina's second shot on 14, joining Lisa Fakus now on 15. Ben from left to right, and then it stables up at the end. So Lisa Fakus will have a birdie look from the island. Not an ideal spot for Evelina to be throwing over the water, but she makes good of it. Catching up with Deanne Carey now on 15. Gotta get up and over the water. It's perfect. It's a nice skip off the ground. Nanda going through the routine to connect for the birdie. We saw a little more time taken with that putt. Was able to cash it in. Kristen trying to bounce back after the bogey on the previous hole. And she too will connect. Looks like we have a lull in the wind or where this basket's placed, maybe a little bit more protection from that wind. And the players are taking advantage of it. Very impressive what we're seeing here on the old hole number one. Everyone connecting on their putts. I cannot remember that ever happening on a card for all players to get a birdie when it was hole one. So it's amazing to see. I mean, there were some amazing putts for side to start off that birdie train deep inside circle, outside circle one inside circle two. 
And then for everyone to follow up, you know, it's that chance to take advantage when the wind is down, a chance to make a birdie. Like I said, there are several birdies to be had in these next few holes. And as we talk about Luke and the work she's doing as she hails from Norway, we look back at Annika Sten, Texas State's champion, also from Norway. What an incredible performance that she put on, becoming yet another unique FPO winner here in the early goings of our 2024 season. Had the pleasure of meeting her back in Norway at the PCS Open. I believe that was fall of 2018. And uh, it was awesome to see her take on that course. She uh, finished second to Katarina. And now watching her win her largest event of her career just a few weeks ago. So incredible. We also saw her battling at the PCS uh, just a couple of years ago as well when we had a silver event taking place over there in Vestnes, Norway. And something to be said about our international contingency as we just saw the top five, seeing that Kristen, along with Luke, Evelina, and Heide, four out of our top five competitors here in the early goings, all from outside of the U.S., brought to my attention that all these unique winners that we've had this year, we only have one player, one of those players that was actually born in the United States. So it's amazing to see so much representation from around the world. And that just goes to show the growth of disc golf. We always talk about the growth of women's disc golf and how it's really been developing over the years. It's amazing to see these players from outside the U.S. really setting the bar. And a near perfect drive from Kristen. Once you get over that branch and punch out of those trees, it's a, a wide open fairway. It's more technical on the next few shots. Welcome in everyone. Terry Miller joined alongside Valerie Jenkins. Val, it's been exciting and I think the wind has a lot to do with it today. We've talked about the renumbering and maybe what that does for the psyche but clearly the wind is the number one factor out there today, right? Yeah, I think so. And it's been fun to watch, but it's been, you know, as wind is, it's a little bit unpredictable. We've seen the players that are playing really well in the beginning, you know, start to fall back, maybe not getting the birdies here in the middle of the course like we would expect. I think it's going to be really important if the wind continues on to keep it close. Make sure you're getting those up shots closer to the basket or driving your shots closer to the pin so you don't have to put so much pressure on your putts. I mean, that's what it always comes down to when the wind picks up. Yeah, we're seeing that there's plenty of birdie opportunities. This course has provided scoring, and we've seen some of the best rounds of all time taking place out on this course. So we know that they're there. It's just a matter of kind of limiting the mistakes that you're making when the winds pick up, playing maybe more conservative than uh, as opposed to being in attack mode on a calm day. Yeah, I'm thinking of when the wind's picking up and what holes you're heading into and at that moment and 
having the field kind of spread out right now, you know, maybe players have the advantage if they're heading into holes that are easier to birdie and the wind's low. Or if the wind picks up and you're on those holes where you have the water carry, how difficult that can be. Depending on how far your drive goes, it's more than likely that this is a blind second shot, not able to see the pin just over the hill. Need a little bit more power. And it will be a shorter putt than what she just had. Avelina on the tee of 15. And we don't see many forehands going after this basket, but Evelina deep of the pin. We're going to roll the Zuka replay, take another look. Just a power forehand coming from Evelina. So impressive. That's going to skip left of the pin. Still an open look for a putt. At least at circle's edge, though. And it does stay safe. There, That OB line on the left comes in around circle two. And Kristen's going to keep this wide and to the right. She's gone deep of the basket. But she'll have an open look for birdie. Yenny Karpinen on the tee of 15. We'll see her in the U.S. for the next couple of weeks. And she's here for Champions Cup along with a few of our Disc Golf Pro Tour events. Now we've got to the point where now we have Finnish competitors that have additional Finnish competitors that aren't just the ones they're traveling with. And we're seeing that with Evelina playing alongside Yeni Karpinen right now. You spoke of the OB that can come into play on this left side. Merch is going to give herself the relief. Effort is low. Trying to just read that wind as it looked like it was more of a right to left headwind coming at her. Luque can tie for the lead, and that's going to just scoop out on the left side. maybe 29 feet for Ananda, and she buries it. And it looks like Sai has settled in to this round. She was maybe 50-50 from putts to start, and now she's really taking her time. She's getting more into that methodical routine that we know she enjoys doing, and she's such a great putter, so two amazing putts back to back. That just barely hangs on as Kristen will find the bottom of the basket. Yeah. 
Redson will clean up for the par. So Kristen out in front, clear of everyone by two or more. And Yenny would go on to convert for birdie on 15. Good bounce back after the bogey on 14. Becca Cox has turned it on on the last few holes. She's got four in a row. Doesn't make it five. But nonetheless, solid streak for Rebecca. Can Evelina convert? Yes. In from 20 feet. So Evelina will move to four under. She's within one of Kristen. I'm thinking of the almost handful of putts that Evelina has missed recently. So it's nice to see her catch up on the birdie. And Raven Klein makes that to save the par. Ryan, is the wind any calmer out there? Talk to us about where they are on the course and how it compares maybe to the early goings. Yeah, right now the wind is maybe 5, 10 miles an hour, but again, it could pick it back up to 25 at any moment. We are where Old Hole 3 used to be, right alongside this access road. Um, they have a little bit of protection from the wind, but still, it's still pretty inconsistent out here. Beautiful line from Sai. Perfect distance as it spikes right next to the pin. No putting required for Ananda. We're going to take another look. We've seen a number of different approaches here. And this one hung out just far enough to the right. Comes in. No skip, as you call Val. Just a spike next to the basket. And that has to be one of her best drives today. We've seen a lot of her shots come out with Heiser, but flip over and the wind really affecting it. And Kristen follows it up with a solid drive of her own. We know the wind's pushing the disc to the left. And that checks up short of the OB. Renson doesn't love it. Now Cap Merch. That's an easy error to make by throwing it too high as you're climbing up the hill. But if you throw it at the basket, the wind is going to take it even more to the left. And now these players are putting back into the headwind for their birdie. Evelina's tee shot on 16, the par four. Rebecca Cox, tee of 15, this is low. Can she get a skip or two? And not enough, Rebecca. Red flag out of bounds. Not the right angle for Owen Scoggins. She too will be out of bounds. Having a rough day out here. <laughs> she, that might be her favorite disc she just threw in there. I mean, look how long she's taking on the tee pad. Well, if you want to watch everyone on hole number 15, we have a dedicated camera so that you can do so. I'm glad it, to uh, invite you here to Jonesboro for the weekend. If you're watching us on YouTube for free right now, we'd love to have you come on over to the network. 
We've got plenty of things going on, including the live DVR, pause and rewind, something everyone was calling for for the last couple of years. You'll be able to do it throughout the season and beyond. So if you need to take that quick break, well, just come on back to the action and get ready whenever you can. Now, merch, the birdie look. Confident putting stroke by Lorenzen. That's going to get her to four under. Momentarily pull her within one of Kristen, who sits at five. However, Kristen looking for a birdie to move on to six under. And she's done just that. Kristen has birdied five of her last six. Those are the kind of birdies you want. Drop it in the pin, don't even have to think about it. Kristen, two bogeys on her scorecard, but very solid being able to get so many birdies. You think back to hole number two, which is when she aggressively ran at a putt and then didn't make the comebacker. And then the other bogey that she had, that's when she had gone out of bounds off of an approach shot on the old hole number 18. So two major mistakes there by Kristen led to those bogeys, but otherwise plenty of birdies to accompany those. Eight in total. Back with Salonen throwing her second on 16. Great scores. You got to be under par to be on the leaderboard. And I'm thinking as we're heading into the middle part of the course, this is when players are hitting their stride, you know, getting comfortable with the round, and it makes it a little bit easier. There's so many more birdie opportunities, but especially when you're warmed up in your round and with this renumbering, you're really able to capitalize and take advantage of those birdies. So saw that Jennifer Allen finished at two under. She went bogey, bogey to close out her day on 17 and 18. And there's that mistake that we've seen several times from Cy today. Throwing something understable and the wind is just taking it to the right. Different teeing area with the 
rest of the hole will look familiar after this. Even a grunt that we hear coming out of Cap Merch trying to put a little more on it. just talking about the international contingency that we have all of them uh, or three players all on the podium right now all from outside of the US including the number one player in the world Kristen somewhat of a slow start for her but she's really turned it on in the last six or seven holes Luke coming out of Norway She just looks so consistent. Her drives have been very smooth, hitting the line she needs. And then of course, Evelina representing Finland. The full power, always aggressive with her drivers. Playing very solid, tied up with Luke at four under. Evelina with the birdie look on 16. Trying to pull within one of Kristen. And that's just off the front of the cage short. Where their drives have landed, that is around the range of where we saw the tee shots or where they needed to throw their tee shots from in previous years. Well, I'm going to throw it out to Brian because, Brian, this feels like the most difficult one for players to kind of orient themselves as to where the best landing zone really is. Break it down for us. Yeah, this is one of the trickier landing zones to access on the entire tour and it used to be a landing zone the players had to access off the tee last year and for numerous years and a lot of players said it was tough to throw their tee shot to a sloped uh, landing zone that was blind from the tee so now I like this change to the par 5 they can bite some distance off the tee and have a little bit easier time accessing it but no matter which way you spin it the shot across the water is probably going to be an angle you haven't practiced yet so pretty cool pretty cool uh, option here for the players so we're watching Luke from up above trying to find that landing zone Brian was just talking about Really, you see the drop zone mat down there. In a perfect world, that's exactly where you would love to land. You'd like to keep it in bounds so that you're not getting any penalty strokes, but that mat is a great spot where you would love to be. Use that as a little bit of a landmark. Fortunately, you just can't see it from the tee. And getting past all of those trees also huge for Kristen. She has good footing. I would expect to see her try to go over the water from there. Otherwise, it may be a, an awkward pitch of only 20 or 30 feet to get closer to the water's edge. ceiling on this tee shot so it's tough to get full distance but Evelina has just so much power good spot to be like you said and if you do aim for that that tee pad down there, you know that you're gonna have that open look and be able to see the pin and throw that direct shot instead of having to maneuver around the trees. Well, and able to give us these angles 
is our friends over at Flight Factory. You can head over to flightfactorydisc.com, use the code Eclipse, and that will get you free shipping throughout this weekend. And I feel like it's almost required we use this angle to really give you an idea of where they're trying to be with these shots as that's going to go and check up just shy of the OB. Brian, are you, are you down there near the drop zone area? Can you tell us if that's inbounds or not? I think it's going to be really close. I think where she went in is on this little down slope. So no one really has a good angle at it right now, but we're getting close. Well, we have a good angle. Flight Factory is helping us out, and we're seeing that is safe. She has less than two feet before finding the OB line. The eye in the sky does it for us. And this is something players need to think about, too, this green of the fairway of the hole here on the left that is marked out of bounds for hole 14. And Luke Gay just trying to pitch back into a better position. That's the thing, if you don't have an angle, if you can't make it over the water, it's smart to just lay up. It doesn't get much better than this after two throws. Kristen trying to find the range of what she's going to need here, but really set up in a great position after two shots. Yeah, and I think we always talk about the footing. You can land on a side hill here, and it becomes very difficult to get enough power to be able to throw that shot over the water accurately. But she's got nice flat footing. She can take a few steps. It's nice not having to think about your footing when you're trying to throw a shot like this. This looks great. And she's gone deep of the pin. She punches right through the alleyway required. And she'll have a comeback putt. This really requires so much skill. They're throwing maybe 250 feet still left and they have to hit that gap that's maybe 20 feet wide if you hit those trees short you're going to be outside the circle with an uphill putt so you want to make sure you're punching through Trees knock her down, but they put her in a good position with still a look to the pin. Wow, thank you. Cat finds the line and inside the bullseye. close to the OB line as you can get, which is helpful to make this shot a little bit shorter. I'd like to see her take even more relief so that she has something to follow through or some land to follow through on. Now remember, even if you're not out of bounds, 
if you come within one meter of the line, you can take a full meter relief from it without penalty. She's again pulled it to the right. Does it land inbounds? Red flag. That's going to be out of bounds for Ananda. The question is, will she rethrow from there or was she given a spot on the other side? And it looks like she's gearing up to throw from here again. Yeah, any, Ouch. any throw that is short of the pond that lands OB will go to the drop zone. So almost the exact same shot now coming from Ananda. And she's pulled that one to the right as well and out of bounds again. So now any shot that goes OB from that drop zone proceeds to a drop zone that's on the other side of the pond just beyond the pin around circle two. We're going to take a quick break on the network. We'll be right back. My name is Garrett Gerthy, and I'm the founder of Double G Craft Jerky. I love the fact that it's resealable. I can just get a little bit, keep my energy levels up, but not eat like a half of a meal in the middle of my round. My favorite bag is the smash cracked pepper. That's my perfect salty snack. This is my go-to, the Saxon Sweet and Spicy. If this bag gets open, there's no need for the seal because I'm going to eat it all. Circle one, slightly uphill. And she is looking so solid. Fantastic par. I thought I was out. Yeah, you were. I just didn't know where the drops were, so I just saved us some time. And it did seem that Sai was farther away and maybe should have gone first, but Luke, she had her eyes set on what she needed to do and stepped up to make that putt. So size actually still left with this tester from the drop zone. It's shocking to see her leave it this short. She takes her time and she's able to convert. A very rough go here for Sai. She's going to fall from fourth into a tie for ninth. Kristen looking to extend her lead. And she'll do just that. Kristen moves to seven under. Evelina with her second shot on 17. Just outside of the bullseye, trying to add another birdie to her scorecard. Looking to secure her spot on lead card tomorrow as her good friend Henna is out there. Henna has not been playing for a couple of weekends here. She had hurt her ankle 
I believe is what I saw. So she's taking it easy and taking another week off as she's prepping for the next major that's right around the corner. Kristen currently out in front by three. And hitting her stride at a really important time. We head into a few holes that are very technical. Hole 15, we've seen it played by many of our competitors. It is, it is not easy today as the wind is just swirling around the green about 300 feet to clear the water and if you do land just short of the pin if you have enough power you'll see shots skip up to the basket I like to see that direct line throwing just straight at the pin Evelina is the only shot that I I think has been successful going up and allowing the wind and it being exposed to the wind Good from Kristen. Just needs a skip. And Kristen is inbounds inside the circle with a birdie look. Yeah. And Lorenzen just barely gets inbounds up and over the water's edge. <laughs> huge sigh of relief. Don't call her Luke. <laughs> that had just enough power. We see a lot of shots getting that close and not getting that lucky. with a laser. It's a play off the backstop, merge inbounds. And it looks like Lucky's disc is just short. Even though she's on land, it's skipped up and dry. She's gonna have to go from the drop zone. The line just a few feet off of the water's edge and not in Lorenzen's favor. And Yeni Karpinen will get into the top 10 with a birdie on 17. Now, Evelina with a birdie look of her own. And she cashes it in. So Evelina, also the birdie. She's at five under, solo second place. That is the basket of 18, and we saw a drive just come in there a moment ago. That also looks to be a few feet short of finding inbounds off to the right side of the pin. Pretty dramatic finishing hole that they've changed up for this year. It's very possible to see multiple stroke swing. You want to make sure you're coming into hole 18 with a sizable lead. There is a river that runs in the middle of this hole, and it's out there where you see those trees in the middle of the fairway. And then there's an OB line on that right-hand side. And I'm 
not sure that even cleared in bounds. So. And Luque did not take the drop zone shot, I don't believe. So she is thinking she is safe. And there she's finding out. There's the discovery that she actually is short of being in bounds. And she's gonna have to make her way back over the bridge and throw from the drop zone. No, I just didn't know the line on this. Brutal. Yeah, and that can really play with you on the, on the mental side. You stepping up, you're going to step up to your shot, trying to focus on making that birdie putt. And now all of a sudden you're like, oh, now I still have to throw it over the water. Evelina's drive was out of bounds, so that is from the drop zone. She'll have a tap-in bogey and should finish her day out at four under par. Should for sure secure her a spot on the lead card tomorrow, though. Yeah, and any tee shot that lands out of bounds has to go from that drop zone. So there's no having to make the call whether you crossed in bounds or where your disc was last in bounds. You immediately go to the drop zone. And same here on this water carry. As we see Luke there heading to the drop zone. And as you called it, Val, just the emotional switch that goes from thinking, hey, I've got a long uphill putt possibly to cash in for birdie to then going all the way back to the drop zone, realizing you're almost for sure taking a four, and that's assuming you have a good approach shot. Yeah, and it, it's basically, yeah, a two-stroke difference right there and on this hole and on hole 18. If you're not throwing it in bounds, you're likely carting that four. You're getting a bogey. Saw Merch pause for a moment, reset herself. However, it doesn't pay off. So off the top of the basket, it still has a little distance left on the comebacker, especially as her putting appears to be a bit shaky. We've seen her miss a few short ones. is not her first three putt of the round. Ananda looking to bounce back. After the struggles on the previous hole, she's gonna go through her full routine. And buries it. Great bounce back. Kristen to extend her lead. And she's done it. She'll move to eight under. We'll be right back. Prince of Sweden. 
Southern royalty was born for plastic stone. There's nothing more that you can do. In the world of disc golf, we often talk about growing the sport. But what does that really mean? It means ensuring that every player has the opportunity to improve their skills, compete at a high level, and have more fun playing our sport. Having the coaching perspective of several elite level professional disc golfers is a key component of our program. And that's why we've brought on Holland Hamlin, one of the top athletes in the sport to be one of our coaches. Holland's unique view of the game and exceptional coaching style have already brought value and results to all of our members. Her lessons are included with over 180 on-demand video tutorials and drills available to Academy members. So join us today at the Power Disc Golf Academy and be part of the movement to grow the sport for everyone. Welcome back, Kristen on the tee of 16. Now has opened up a four shot lead. Well, 16 is what many of you would think of as the old number seven. And this is played as one of the easier par fours on the course for a number of years. It's a good spot to be over on that right hand side of the fairway. Large area that's marked OB on the left. they push up the fairway. We'll head over to the 18th with Rebecca Cox. Oh, get through it. Come on. Yeah. yeah. She went from awe to get through it to come on, come on, come on. And sure enough, on the green, she'll have a look for birdie. And as we look at this overview shot, all of that area that's that darker green, that's all marked out of bounds. So being on this right, make sure you're there nice and clear, but it's a tricky angle. It's really a tricky angle anywhere you land on the tee shot because you have to get around those trees to the left. The basket's tucked just behind that wall. And I'm not going to say it's impossible. Uh, oh, Sai can get through the trees and, and punch through to give herself a look, but it is just a, a difficult angle. She's got to get around this tree with this hyzer line. And then it would have to sharply bend to the right. It's just not ideal to land there off of your tee shot. If you're trying to go for the birdie, that is. Big drive from Kristen gets her near this corner. So she, it'd be better if she was another 30 feet to the right. She can have a little bit more space. Going with the backhand. I 
and that's still going to access the green. So she'll have a look for birdie, an opportunity to extend her lead by another stroke. We saw the drive by Rebecca. She has this left for birdie. Count it. Rebecca finishes with the birdie on 18. Gonna roll the Zuka replay, take another look. She has made several large putts today. Every time we're checking in with Rebecca, she's been able to save herself from outside the circle. That's going to secure a spot on Chase Card tomorrow for Rebecca. Doesn't quite punch all the way through for Merch. She'll have an obstructed putt. Evelina Salonen is in second place. She's sitting at four under. We caught up with her after the round. Here's what she had to say. Okay, and I'm back here in the booth with Evelina Salonen. Evelina, how was the first round out there at the disc side of heaven? It was fun, but also so windy. <laughs> yes, very windy. How uh, do you like playing in that much wind? Is that familiar to you or is it difficult? It's difficult, but I think it's easier for me because I can throw super stable discs and still get that distance. Interesting. Yeah. Um, how did you how did you like the, the new layout of the course? They kind of switched around a couple of the holes. The design wasn't too much different, but how did that affect you? Um, I like this course and I like to throw far, so I think this is perfect perfect course to me. Sweet, yeah. Um, do you feel like that's do you feel like that's gonna help you out through through the rest of the weekend going into Saturday and Sunday? That extra distance? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. um, it looked like uh, you didn't really have any fear on hole 18. You didn't decide to lay up. You just went straight for the green. Um, can you talk us through that decision? Yeah, actually, I haven't tr tried that layup, so I didn't oh, know what okay. to do. But I was trusting. I just put a little bit too much hyzer on it because I thought it's going to flip a little bit. But yeah, it's my game plan to go for it. Game plan all three <laughs> days. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Yeah, I think so. All right, great. Wow, we've got some excitement ahead from Evelina Salin and Evelina, thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Cat Merch has a birdie look on 16. Yeah. I, I knew it was obstructed, but I didn't think that much. The big mistake from Merch. I saw her shaking her hand. I was thinking she hit her hand, but then in that replay, it, it, I don't think she did. But it's a tricky putt when you have that barbed wire in your way. And the fact that she was trying to be aggressive, trying to make, take advantage of it, it, just comes back to bite her. Just pausing momentarily. This looks simply like waiting for the wind. I don't think it's a matter of confidence or if it's a matter of what she wants to do it's just a matter of will she get a break in the wind and the wind right to left and with her hyzer putt it makes it very challenging to keep it close if she doesn't oh my gosh <laughs> i'm thinking if she doesn't make it but there was no doubt as soon as she released it to extend her lead to five. Kristen lines up for the birdie, pauses momentarily, and cashes it in. That was a solid recovery putt from Cat Merch. Putting stroke coming from Luke. Mm -hmm. 
we take another look. Val, we're worried about the wind and how it would react if she doesn't connect. However, center chain. And see, Kristen is 10 in one when leading going into the, with two rounds left to play, their only loss was the 2022 Champions Cup. She had lost to Paige Pierce. And that's 10 and one when leading. Not all of those were five or six strokes as she's already amassed today. What a performance, and for everyone that continues to track Kristen's rating as she came up just short of the 1,000 mark a few days ago. Whatever this uh, is going to shake out at the end of today, I know is certainly going to help her cause as she's still on the quest to become the first ever 1,000-rated woman player. Well, if the trend continues to win an elite or a major in this season, you have to average over a thousand. So Kristen is in great position right now. She's doing a very solid opening round. This season, it hasn't been perfect for Kristen. She's coming off of a win, but she hasn't won everything. She hasn't been as dominant as she has been in previous years. And so I think that gives her something to fight for. Yeah, and as I'm looking, Evelina Solonen, who's in the clubhouse with a four under, that's unofficially currently rated at 1,000. And right Whoa. now we're seeing Kristen five strokes in front of that. Uh, so we'll see how she closes out over the next couple of holes. And Sai gets through the branch. Nice to see that powerful drive finish out. Fights through, gets some good distance even after connecting with some of the trees. Kristen out in front by five. We'll see you in a few. You Play Disc Golf is your passport to teaching and learning the game. Our mission? To teach disc golf and make it accessible to everyone worldwide. From Alaska to Africa, Guatemala to Canada, and beyond, You Play Disc Golf has spread its wings teaching the love of the game across the globe. Get involved in our movement to make disc golf a universal joy. Explore youplaydiscgolf.org and join us in helping people find flight. To reinvent means looking to the future, seeing greatness for a new generation. With the passion to perform and the talent to win, the time is now. The future is here.
while we are in break. Cat throwing her second. Well, this is pushing left. Could bring OB Danger into play. It looks like she's going to be safe but obstructed. And it doesn't look like that much of a, a daunting hole as we're finishing off this course, but there's OB lining the fairway in beyond the pin. And Luke Gay gets the red flag. Yeah, that OB line up near the basket is around 20 feet on that left side. So you have to be very accurate on these second shots. You know, we've talked a lot about the renumbering and what it does for players. Brian, we close out on 17 and 18 on these two holes. How do you feel like that's played into the overall uh, game plan and attack by our players? Yeah, well, currently on 17, it looks like the OB has been tightened up even more. So I think this is going to be the one that brings the most drama late. We just saw Lucky kind of go OB and drag it too far to the right. And now she's going to have a two-stroke swing as opposed to whether or not she could put that second shot in bounds. But then you move to 18. Calvin was saying something along the lines of, you know, as a finishing hole, the worst you're going to get is a two-stroke swing because you go out of bounds, you go to a drop zone, you lay up, uh, you know, and then you're all done. Um, so we'll just have to see, but I really like the FPO par three. I think we could see some pretty sweet park jobs coming down the stretch as well. And Kristen is going to go deep of the pin. She keeps it in bounds and will be inside the circle with her birdie luck. said it before that Jonesboro offers up plenty of scoring opportunities and it's also led to some pretty significant margins of victory. Last year Kristen winning by 10 averaging 1,009 the year before. Katrina Allen won by 8 and Pierce who has dominated a few of the years that she was out here winning by 13 and 10. Also uh, heading into some uh, incredible golf and play over those couple of years some of the highest rated rounds that we've seen in the last decade have come from this course on the FPO side. And I really feel like the renumbering of these holes and placing a lot of those more birdieable holes later in the course is allowing the players to maybe even rack up more birdies than we've seen in the past. You know, for previous years, hole 11 through 12 as we're making our way through this course those were our starting holes so you needed to be ready to go off a of t1 ready to birdie get yourself in good position and then maintain as you headed into the back nine which played a little bit more difficult now it's almost flip-flopped the harder holes are in that front nine you know how do you maintain in the front and then in the back you need to be warmed up and ready to go Merch has an opportunity to save par after going out of bounds. There's a light or gentle slope directly behind this pin. And that's going to head her toward the OB as well. I, I think I'm being once I marked it. With that much hyzer coming out of her hand, or the, the disc on that much angle, just like we've seen on a number of other missed putts, she needs to hit oh, yeah. something to slow it down because otherwise... Every one of these slopes comes into play for her more than any other player. And it's even more dramatic if she's throwing and trying to put up to these elevated baskets. There's so much air underneath the disc. Kristen trying to get to double digits under par. A great drive, pretty good approach. Kristen comes up short with the putt. So it's relatively calm here with the wind. Yeah, 
Five. Solid putt coming from Sai Ananda. Putter is just failing her at the moment. Merch is in as the chance of her repeating and defending her title not looking likely. Kristen will tap in for the par. She has a five stroke lead over second place. She's off to a great start here in round one. Val, what are your keys for closing? Brought to us by blackinkdisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Well, you gotta be accurate. Make sure you're landing those shots in bounds, keeping it nice and safe. And that takes execution. Especially when the wind starts to pick up, you wanna make sure you're focused and committed on what you need to do and I think a lot of these shots you have to risk it for that reward and if you have to come back here in the final round there's plenty of opportunities to make up strokes but there's a lot of risk that can come into play yeah hole 18 we've played this hole before it was a different number now we head into it as our finishing hole and Got the OB on the right, and then that little inlet of OB just in front of the basket. You have to hit the shot perfectly if you're going to try and go for the green. If you do go out of bounds, you go to the drop zone, which is just a short pitch up over the OB still, but it's around 80 feet to the basket. So you don't see a ton of drama. There could be two strokes handed, but it's not likely going to be more than that. We have seen players in the past go for the layup and not try and go over the OB or clear the OB. And that can, that can come into play, especially if the wind picks up even more throughout the weekend. And you want to make sure that you're just walking away with a par and trying to keep the drama out of it. And so Kristen is inbounds after an interesting reaction off the tree. And I thought that was so interesting to hear uh, AJ when he caught up with Evelina, her talking about she didn't even practice the layup shot. She just knew she was going for this all three rounds. We'll have to see uh, who else has that strategy. Ananda's pulled this one to the right. Unfortunately, that's about the seventh time we've seen her Pull a drive too far to the right, and she'll be punished by going out of bounds. And this isn't an automatic drive. This isn't a drive that all the players in the field can reach. It's 345 feet. So I feel like if you have that elite distance like Evelina, you know, focusing on the shot that you know you're going to throw, standing up on that tee pad, but for a lot of these players, a layup is the smarter choice. And that punches all the way through. <laughs> Similar area as to where we saw Rebecca Cox land. So we'll see if Cat can possibly close out with a birdie. Take another look at Kristen's. And that could have rolled in any direction. Thankfully it rolls on the safe side and will give her a look at a birdie. But she left that shot inside and didn't hit the line that she wanted to in the sky. But her round, it caught up to me quickly. I mean, to have her now with six birdies in the back nine, six in a row, 
She was slow and steady to start in the front with those two bogeys, and then boom, she really caught fire. Someone who's been on fire all day, Brian Earhart. Brian, any parting shots before we let you go? First off, Terry, that was just a wonderful compliment. Uh, you know, I, I do kind of feel on fire right now, but I think it's just because I got to watch Kristen Tatar play like Grand Slam Kristen Tatar. I think she's the one who's on fire right now, uh, but it's kind of captivating. I mean, we're watching her make just perfect decision after perfect decision. She has this gentle, calm demeanor about her. She's methodical. She's taking just the right amount of time on every shot. I mean, I can only think of one true decision-making error, and that was on old 18, new 10, where she threw forehand on the second shot. You could see she was kind of kicking herself a little bit. But other than that, it was just a, a real clinic out there. So pretty, pretty awesome stuff to watch. Couldn't agree more. It has been incredible. She's currently sitting on a significant lead. We'll see if she extends it. But first, Cat Merch. Yeah, it was really just a what came down to a two-woman race last weekend with Owen and Kristen. And Kristen getting the best, saying she had played really good golf. It's moved to 10 under. And she's done it. Kristen opens up with a 10 under par. That is six clear of Evelina Solonen sitting in second. She gets the double digits with two bogeys on her scorecard. Just fantastic shooting from Kristen and Luque finishes her round. Two under. And players are 15 and one when leading by five or more strokes with two rounds left to play. The only loss was Holly Finley at the 2020 Idlewild Open. So Kristen opens up with a six stroke lead after round number one. The last thing you wanna do is give her <laughs> that much of a head start with just 36 holes left to play. Looked very comfortable out there today. Kristen, 10 under, your leader. Brian, I think, said it best, that it feels like this is the Kristen we've kind of uh, come to learn and know and expect to see as we did in her Grand Slam season. But did anything jump out at you today? Was there anything specific? Like I said, it, it kind of snuck up on me. It, through nine holes, we're having the conversation of all these players in the mm. hunt. You know, Evelina was there. Luque was there. And then all of a sudden, boom, six birdies in a row from Kristen. Puts her in mm. just a huge lead above everyone else. So, you know, something to keep an eye on. This back nine of the course is playing – very low under par. There's so many more opportunities for birdie. So as we talk about these next two rounds, you know, the front nine, you just want to play steady, but it's really the back nine where you need to score. Yeah, it was incredible because it was just like another gear that she kicked it into. And so we're going to be able to hear from her. She's going to catch up with Brian, but first we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we'll have Kristen and we'll also have our OTB after show. We'll see you there.
the 2024 Prodigy Signature Series are here. The Signature Series explores the evolution of flight and captures our players' personalities along the journey. From prehistoric to flying machines, the theme for the 2024 Signature Series has some incredible artwork on some amazing pieces of plastic. Get yours on ProdigyDisc.com and at your local retailer. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Pound's the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. Let's start from the beginning. I didn't choose Pound, I chose Levi. I trusted Levi to make the best bag possible. He's always trying to innovate. He wants it to be perfect. And I think he's the kind of guy that nothing's ever perfect. I trust the product. I trust the people behind the product. At this point, I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. Some say we're hidden, unless you know where to look. Hidden? No. This is where we stand up straight and tell you who we are, and where we put others first. This is where college football and barbecue are a season in the same. And there's always time for one more lap around the park. This is where we ask, what else can we accomplish together? Come find out. Be a part of this. This is Jonesboro, Arkansas. Now you know where to look. In a backyard kingdom, not so different from your own. A prince of southern royalty was born for plastic stone. There's nothing more that you can do. With 20 years of the educational disc golf experience, disc golf is now a mainstream activity in physical education across the nation. 150,000 lightweight golf discs, 267 permanent campus courses installed, and thousands of partner programs in all 50 states. As a 100% publicly funded charity, Edge Disc Golf couldn't do it without you. Please join our mission to reach and teach the next 3 million young disc golfers. What's up? I'm Raven, Team Zuka. Here's what's in my cart. All my main discs are in this bottom compartment, easily accessible at mouth and eye level. My treats are in the side pockets up there. It's inconvenient, but good for self-control. A feature I'm iffy on is those unpoppable foam tires. I have tried. They don't pop. But my favorite thing about my cart is when my mom grabs it, I know I'm going O-U-T. And there's squirrels out there. Look back at what Kristen has done here in round number one. Round number eight, this required no putting whatsoever as she would park that one for an easy birdie. And she certainly got her putter going as well. That one from just inside the circle on the old hole number one, now number 11. Put herself in prime position after two throws to then go over the water with her third. Start 
relying on both forehands and backhands here. She would wait for the win just the right amount of time to then cash in the putt. That was the longest putt she had to make all day. Really keeping them close and so accurate with her drives and her approaches. And that would go on. An unofficial 1044 rated round one would be the sixth highest rated FPO DGPT round. Kristen is in the clubhouse. She caught up with Ryan Earhart. Let's hear from them now. All right, joining us now in the clubhouse, current leader, Kristen Tatar, 10 under on the day with two bogeys. How did you feel? Uh, I felt very good uh, most of the time. I feel like the mistakes I made were kind of stupid. <laughs> I don't know. There were should be like easy things that should be like when I wake up in the morning I should be able to like putt from like I don't know so close mm -hmm. and uh, throwing um, what was it the par five I thought after my tee shot that it was a guaranteed birdie for sure because I I, I did not see a possibility to take more than a four <laughs> and then I ended up taking a six so I don't know I'm I have mixed feelings about those two bogeys um, and the birdie putt I missed on hole 17 but other than that I was playing so good I was making the putts and I think I didn't even have to putt that much I was so close to the pin most of the time so I think uh, yeah it was a very very good round for me Speaking of putting, you did have to hit a couple really nice putts. On 16, you hit a great crosswind putt yeah. from like 30 feet or so. Yeah. When the wind is gusting from like five up to 25 miles an hour, how much are you like calculating the release point on a crosswind putt or is it just feel? Well, first of all, I just tried to wait a little bit, see if it changes because the wind was just swirling around. So I knew that I can't be anxious. So I have to be patient and my moment will come and I'll try to make the putt. Um, but yeah, in the wind, I feel like it's it's mostly about confidence. Um, you, It's easy to have shaky hands when it's windy. So I was just trying to tell myself that I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. <laughs> well, Kristen, congratulations on the round yeah. today. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. What I loved hearing from her just now, she said, I have to be patient. My moment will come. And that was exactly what she did there. Kristen has had one win so far here in the 2024 season where she defended her title at Waco. Off to a really good start here. Will you think she needs to do similar scoring because there's so many birdies out on this course? Will, will she need to keep up this pace for the rest of the weekend? It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> um, but, yeah, think about it that, you know, turn those bogeys into par. That's two strokes better there. And She even mentioned missing the birdie putt on 17. That's another stroke. So the potential for her to shoot even lower is certainly there. I think the wind, I mean, it was pretty strong today. It, of course, could blow harder and, and be more difficult conditions, but I think it's an incredible start to what she had and shows what potential is out there. And I think Kristen is a player that we would expect to play very consistent throughout the weekend and to know that she can shoot this well in, in the first round and as she warms up and continues to get more comfortable with this layout, you know, the potential for her to go even lower is certainly there. So who can keep up? I mean, well, that's going to be the story. Amazing first round. But, yeah, it, there were a lot of people in the hunt through nine holes. And then the story changed very quickly. Yeah, and speaking of that, I was thinking about how we assess what Kristen did on the back where she picked up essentially six or seven birdies in the latter half of the course. You compare that to Jen Allen, who we saw off to a really good start. At one point was four under, bogey free, and then Jennifer Allen really stalled on the back. She went even par on the last nine holes. She had two of her birdies in the back nine, but then she bogeyed on both 17 and 18. So you compare and contrast right there. There's six strokes just on the back nine between Jennifer and Kristen. And so I, I know that Jen's going to be thinking tonight when she goes to bed, hey, where can I clean things up? How can I improve? She has to be looking at that back nine because, as you've said multiple times, the scoring is in the back right now. And the the scores throughout the entire 
division were showing us that today. So you have to really maintain in the front and then go out and be aggressive on the back. And then maybe you have to decide, like in Evelina Salonen, is 18 just a green light no matter what? You know, we saw it from Kristen. We saw it from a Cat Merch and another, uh, a number of other competitors. 18 green light, you're going for it. And unless you have the luxury to lay up for the win, I don't know. It'll be yeah. exciting to see. Yeah. And some players, they're more comfortable when they're more aggressive. So it'll be fun to watch. We'll see who can make the comeback. Well, the question now is who has the OTB shot of the day? What jumped out at you that you really saw or like today? I really like that circle two putt for Kristen, standing over it, waiting for the wind to die down just a bit. And, you know, I was thinking maybe she's thinking about, should I just lay up here? No. Kristen Tatar doing Kristen Tatar things. I loved, I personally loved the forehand. It was early on. It was the par four. It was the old hole number nine. It was a forehand that she had when she was crouched under the tree. She had a forehand that had to bend around and then check up next to the basket that she turned into a birdie. I already forgot what new hole number that is. But <laughs> that was my favorite, and it immediately jumped out. But nonetheless, let's take a look, see what the control room had to say about our only the best OTB shot of the day. Did either of us have it? Sai Ananda. We're giving it to her as this one flips over on her and then would roll look out, look out. within 20 feet of the pin, pushing everybody back. And then, most importantly, she would go on to convert for birdie. So Sai Ananda, the only birdie in the entire division. She's your OTB shot of the day. This afternoon, we've got the action coming at you at 3 p.m. Central. We'll have Nate Sexton along with Nate Doss. For Brian Earhart out on the course, along with Valerie Jenkins, I'm Terry Miller. We'll see you this afternoon.